Maxerno Borderlands 3 video and today we have our next episode of Masterclass a series where we talk with uh, content creators or people in the community have who have mastered a build, a character, something about the game where I get on a call with them, talk to them, interview them, and see what they know. Today we have Prismatic who is... Uh, you guys have seen him featured in my videos. He's kind of my go-to source for Borderlands math and he is insane at most. He knows so much about most. So I will be learning a lot of things today and I hope you guys learn something as well. Prismatic, how the hell are you? Hello. Uh, thank you for having me. Of course. I'm very well, thank you. Awesome. So I understand we've got a lot to talk about. Um, where do you want to first start? with talking about Moe's? I think it's best we start off with short views. It's the center of the matter and we all know it's powerful, but why and how? Uh-huh. So what so, makes short views so good? So short views is very powerful because it's double dips and bonuses, which we hear it a lot. In essence, mm. if you've got a splash bonus, it takes that splash bonus once for your gun and then again for short views. And so you, you it basically doubles the value of any bonuses you give to it which makes Moe's who has a lot of splash damage available to her it allows her to get maximum value out of that damage for using splash weapons with it and it allows her to deal insane damage more recently it's also received mayhem scaling which mm -hmm. means that at mayhem 10 the card is a lie it's not 75 percent of gun damage it goes up to 525 percent of gun damage 525 percent gun damage it's on the explosion when it triggers? Yeah, it's it's 525% of the good. damage that your bullet dealt. So your bullet arrives, it gets all your bonuses, and that damage is then 525% of that. Mm. And then that 525% then gets splash damage again, and then it gets certain special modifiers again. So if you've got a 300 over 90 anoint, it gets 300 over 90 again, making it that much more powerful yeah. over and above. 390 works with short fuse Brock. Yes. Yeah, it's very it, gross. <laughs> it, 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 it double dips, and that allows you to pull off um, one shots. Something unstated on, of short fuse is mm -hmm. that there's an internal cooldown on it. So you can only get one successful proc every one tenth of a second. So guns that have multiple pellets that um, hit at the same time, you can get a max of one proc for those hits. So okay. something like the flipper, which goes up to nine pellets, you can will only get one proc per group of nine pellets that are arriving. So, and then on the flipper, because yeah. it's so popular right now, I made a build with it. It's apparently my favorite weapon to use on Moe's. You're saying that not all those projectiles at the same time could be proccing short fuse, but because it has a high pellet count, you can kind of hit short fuse more often? Or is it not so, good with multi-pellet weapons, period? Every time those nine pellets arrive, mm. it, each one of those has an individual chance to proc short fuse. So you get nine chances to proc short fuse, which means you're almost always going to get a short fuse proc. Mm. But the minute one of those procs short fuse, the reds can no longer proc short fuse. They're, they're checked, but if it's successful, proc the game discards it. You get, so you get one short fuse proc mm. from that. Short fuse is powerful enough that that still makes an insane damage increase, even though you're only getting around one of the nine bullets gotcha but it makes yeah sense. it's only one of them it's and probably why my the stage coach fire... stage coach mo's build didn't do so hot <laughs> yeah <laughs> there, 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 there's a there's a break point where you've got too many pellets since they mayhem scale short fuse that break point is probably up into the high teens it's probably around 1820 somewhere where it stops being worth it mm. but for nine and especially on splash guns which are double dipping your splash bonuses still very worth it even when you're into 10 12 pellets so shortly um flipper has a low enough fire rate that you don't have to worry about um encountering the uh internal cooldown again something mm -hmm. like the monarch is an example of a gun that just is anti-synergy with short fuse okay it's, that makes sense when you're going to buy pod mode you get at minimum eight pellets so as we said with the flipper only one can proc short fuse but it's also got a fire rate faster than um 10 so 
you get two batches of bullets falling within that internal cooldown of a successful proc. So essentially only one in every 16 bullets can proc short fuse. Mm -hmm. Really reducing the impact. Furthermore, the Monarch isn't splashed, therefore you also don't get that double dipping of your splash bonuses. So besides the flipper in general, if I'm trying to find a weapon that would be synergistic with short fuse on my splash mo's build, what kind of things am I looking out for? You're looking out for like a medium pellet count weapon, so like between like three and seven to eight pellets mm -hmm. and you're looking out for a fire rate as close to 10 as you can get so after your fire rate bonuses have applied you want to be as close to 10 as you can get okay. while not exceeding 10. so if you get like a fire rate of like nine point something mm -hmm. your gravy with like five pellets that's like sweet spot short fuse as a balance gotcha okay that makes sense uh lastly is the short fuse is um predetermined so follows a binary string so every time you load into the game you can shoot the dummy and you get a short fuse proc that first proc shoot it a second time you will get another short fuse proc and the third time you won't get anything mm. generally this has very little practical application but if you're doing something like boss killing yeah load in with your high powered single sh um, pellet weapon shoot the boss you get a short fuse proc probably one shot the boss and you can do this repeatedly you don't have to worry about every time i loaded will i get the short fuse proc this time to one shot the boss i want to do this with an emp5 by the way just as a single pellet ah so that was my first shot and the guaranteed short fuse yeah if you were and to reload you would get that again if i reload i'm gonna short fuse again yeah and you'll find you won't get a proc if you shoot now and why is that it's following a um, set pattern, and this pattern is repeatable. There is a Mo's resource that lists the exact pattern up to about 70 or so procs. Mm -hmm. But it, it repeats this pattern, so you can use it to manipulate um, procs. Uh, Flak players will know this for two, for, um, two Fang. Mm -hmm. oh, Manipulating okay. Two Fang procs to one shot bosses is a very popular thing. You can do the same thing with short views because it is predetermined. So if I want to one-shot bosses as Moe's, I should try to have my first shot out of my gun be as high damaging, biggest damage weapon yeah. I can get. Pile your bonuses onto that first shot and try and maximize that first shot's damage. Makes sense. And how much uh, damage is Short Fuse doing on, like, an Ion Cannon shot? Just... Uh, ooh, how well are we maximizing this? If I, if I want to, if I pile up an ion cannon shot, so I uh -huh. take a ion cannon with like 300 over 90, I get a blast master, and I put on my slash bonuses. Yeah, and everything. then I Just use like 25 the on grenade throw. I can hit damage cap. Damage cap with just short fuse. Just short fuse matching elements to a boss. Yeah, hey, Moses is joining the damage cap gang. That's awesome. <laughs> she, she was here before, but yeah. <laughs> so yes, Ion Cannon can very much do that. Uh, a quirk of Short Fuse, though, is that because it's a second instance of damage, there's certain an annoyance next to mag annoyance and bonus elements in general. There's mm -hmm. exceptions, fire in the skag, and 150% um, uh, radiation are exceptions to this, so ignore them for what I'm about to say. But mm. They're a separate instance of damage, so one, they don't feed into the amount of damage that Short Fuse is based on, which is bad. You want everything to um, mm. go feed into what Short Fuse is based on. And the anointments secondly, you said are... The anointments, next, sorry, to clarify, is which ones? Next to Mag's bonus um, elemental damage, of, mm. so next to Mag's bonus fire damage, also um, auto active anoints. Most as those anoints uh -huh. also don't do so well because they don't feed into the damage that Short Fuse is based on, and they also don't apply to short fuses damage. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're, they're two separate things that are competing, and short fuse is such a large portion of Moses' DPS at this point that you just don't notice the difference with the next two mags anoint. A fairly typical Blastmaster build is so reliant on short fuse for its damage, you put an extra mags anoint on the build, you get like 10, 20% extra DPS mm -hmm. for an anoint that's offering 100% bonus elemental damage and what about the uh ne next two mags fire after exiting iron bear is that different than the no, generic same category same category, same category. Oh, okay. generic. it's unhealthy radi radiation with 150 um 
rad damage when under 50% health. That is an exception. That applies to short fusion is good. It's bonus elements on grenade and shield. They also apply to short fuse and are better. And it's skagged in. Every other bonus element that comes to mind mm -hmm. is bad with short fuse. Oh, okay. So for my Moe's build to maximize my damage with short fuse, I should be looking for, you correct me if I'm wrong, uh, like consecutive hits, splash, you red, and I guess 100 ASE. Yeah, that's kind of your options. Consecutive hits is the general winner because it's easiest to use. Mm. Splash Noin tends to be your best damage overall, and Urad is kind of in the middle of, if you're under 50% health, it is great. However, currently with Skag Den offering so much bonus damage because it receives mayhem scaling, mm. um, Urad also is minimal damage because Urad clashes with Skag Den and isn't a great increase. You want consecutive hits or you want splash damage currently. Mm. If Skag Den wasn't scaling with Mayhem, Urad would also be a very good pick. Okay, that makes sense. And anything else um, in this blue tree that you want to touch on? It's worth talking about cooldowns. Okay. Grizzled and Explosive Punctuation both offer um, cooldown for Moe's. Mm -hmm. Grizzled is a hard one to wrap your head around because one, it's a kill skill, two, it's reducing time. So comparing it to Explosive Punctuation isn't immediately obvious and you kind of want to refer to a resource for math if you want the full in-depth breakdown but the shorter your cooldown already is like if you're early exiting the better grizzled becomes mm -hmm. for if you get into iron bear and you immediately get out of iron bear if you get two kills with grizzled mm -hmm. you've already out on anything that explosive punctuate oh, okay so for cooldown and iron bear use you recommend grizzled over explosive punctuations for full duration Bear right, so like doing an iron bear build. Breakpoint is higher. It's about seven kills for Grizzle to be doing better than explosive punctuation. Mm. And if you can get seven kills while iron bear is on cooldown, anything further than that just makes Grizzle again a better um, cooldown skill. Mm -hmm. But you have to judge your build. Do you think your build can reliably get seven kills while iron bear is on cooldown? If you don't think so, explosive punctuation is a better cooldown skill. Okay. So just to clarify, if I'm using like a gun build and I'm hopping in and out of Iron Bear and immediately go grizzled, but if I'm going to stay in for the whole duration, unless I can get seven kills consistently, go explosive punctuations for the cooldown. Yes, Moses is at a point where you almost always will get, be able to get seven kills. Mm. And my recommendation, if in doubt, take grizzled, it will serve you better. Mm. However, the case is for explosive punctuation is I can't get killed at all. And I've, I'm doing full bear rides. Mm. Generally, explosive, generally, if you can't get kills, you're also running away from combat, so you're not dealing splash damage, and explosive punctuation isn't worth it anyway. Mm -hmm. So Makes sense. Grizzled wins still. Lastly, pull the holy pin is worth mentioning here. Mm. I've spec... I spec one point to pull the holy pin. This is because at Mayhem 10, grenades don't deal a lot of damage, and the damage that they do deal is very negligible. Mm -hmm. So boosting pull the holy pin for damage doesn't net you a good return, and there's better skills in Demolition Woman that offer more value for more points. So I spread the points elsewhere and get myself other value. Mm. I do keep one point to pull the holy pin, and I recommend everyone does, because it allows you to proc redistribution when you're up against an enemy that doesn't have a crit spot. Wotan is an excellent example of this. Half the fight, you're up against Death Spears and Wotan, which have no crit spot. Mm. So you throw your grenade, it procs redistribution for you, and you keep going like that. One point and pull the holy pin with a cloning maddening tracker almost always gets you a crit. If you don't have a perfect grenade, sometimes two points and pull the holy pin can be worth it just to keep redistribution going because that's important to modes. Mm. But the actual damage of pull the holy pin is relevant more in a minesweeper build. If you run a minesweeper build, you want three points. Yeah. Because minesweeper nades can crit a relevant amount of damage, and minesweeper chains are the reason we all run minesweeper. And you mentioned there the cloning mining tracker. I've been using this every, on my very first Moe's build, and still to this day on most of my Moe's builds, use this grenade. Why is this grenade so popular? For Moe's. It has synergy with Means of Destruction and Vampire. The Means of Destruction synergy is 
the more times you deal splash, every time you deal splash damage, you have a chance to get ammo or grenades back. Mm. So you want as many hits as possible to give the most chance to have ammo in your grenades return to you. Mm -hmm. Cloning Madden Tracker has the most child projectiles or second most. I think tall grenades have the most. It's it's up there in the top two, but they're also home. Therefore, you it gets the most consistent number of hits for means of destruction. Vampire is healing based on enemies hit. So mm -hmm. again, the more hits you can get, the better. There's two ways to maximize Vampire. You can either get a grenade that has a large blast radius and try and hit multiple enemies with one grenade to get uh, if you hit five enemies with four Vampire points, you get 80% of your missing health returned. You can do that, but there's not a great grenade for that. Or you can use like a pull the holy, I mean, a cloning man in tracker grenade and hit multiple enemies lots of times mm -hmm. to restore your health. Okay. That makes sense. And so if someone doesn't have a cloning maddening tracker, is there another grenade that you'd recommend besides that since it's pretty hard to get? The easiest thing I find is to vendor farm. You vendor farm yourself just any tracker grenade. Try mm -hmm. and get with his, with cloning, bounty, or merv parts. If you can get two of those three parts, you've generally got a decent grenade. Otherwise, the epicenter grenade is a good grenade for... Mm -hmm. Ampio. Because it spawns so many orbs, correct? Yeah, it spawns so many orbs and it it appears to be able to hit an enemy multiple times at once. So you you get a phenomenal vampire performance from mm. an enemy center. Just the issue with it is that you have to manually aim it and under pressure in combat, that's sometimes difficult. And uh, one more question uh, about this blue tree before we move on. Stainless Steel Bear used to scale short fuse damage. It no longer does, correct? Correct. So Stainless Steel Bear and Scorching RPMs both scale short fuse damage. Mm -hmm. They no longer do that. They do, however, scale Skag Den damage, which is weird, but both of them increase the damage that Skag Den deals. So if I'm, I'm yeah. sorry, if I'm making a gun build and I'm going to use Fire in the Skag Den, I should still spec Stainless Steel Bear? Yes, because that Iron Bear damage on Stainless Steel Bear will increase your fire and scat damage. Do you know how much it increases it by? It's 20%. It's the, it's the Iron Bear damage listed on the card, and Scorching RPMs is 25%. Okay, interesting. And those are the only two Iron Bear skills that actually affect Yes, fire they're the only two that affect um, Skag Den, and none of the Iron Bear skills affect Short Fuse anymore. Another noteworthy thing for um, Stainless Steel Bear that is that it increases the duration Auto Bear will be out if you use a Rocketeer comp. So, Deadlines doesn't change the Rocketeer's duration for Auto Bear. Mm -hmm. Stainless Steel Bear does. So you get close to, you get like two and a half minutes if you have um, five Stainless Steel Bear in a, in a Rocketeer build. Whereas without Stainless Steel Bear, you get just under two minutes of Auto Bear. So you'd prioritize Stainless Steel over Deadlines for Iron Bear duration? I'd always prioritize that Stainless Steel is a better skill. It also helps with um, fuel. Deadlines mm. is phenomenal, and if you're doing an Iron Bear build, you want both. But if you're doing a Rocketeer build, or if you're doing a build that's a hybrid, Stainless Steel Bear is the first priority. Makes sense. All right, let's move on to the Red Tree. Anything in the Red Tree that you think we should know about, or that's a little weird slash worth Secu noting? Security Bear is worth um, noting because the skill description isn't very clear on what it does. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a physical shield that appears around Iron Bear, and that stops any incoming bullets. So you it's just total damage mitigation. And with Iron Bear's current health, that's a very large shield, because Iron Bear has between 800k and just over a million health at Mayhem 10. Mm. So you get a very large shield to protect you that is very good at protecting you. And that's all well and good and it recharges instantly after five seconds you don't have to wait after those five seconds for it to slowly come back you get full um capacity after five seconds so that is excellent but what it doesn't tell you is that you also take 25 percent less damage just by having the skill iron bear takes 25 percent less damage the shield takes 25 percent less damage even when the shield's unactivated or yes. just okay so even iron bear just gets unactivated. straight up damage mitigation from this yes 25% um, of the damage that you would have taken, gone. Very interesting. I did not know that. And uh, another thing that 
I you told me this and I, I mentioned it in my Iron Maiden Moe's video, but now that you're here, you could confirm it. Um, you told me that drowning in breaths only applies to, was it the pilot's left weapon? Yes. Drowning in brass with Iron Bear has two properties. One, it only applies to the left hand, but you also you don't get stacks from when you were on foot as Moe's. So if you have three drowning in brass and you hop into Iron Bear, those three drowning in brass, they still appear on your HUD, but you don't get the damage bonus from them. You have to restack drowning in brass while in Iron Bear mm. to get the damage bonus. And that applies to the, your left arm as a pilot is affected by drowning in brass's damage. Mm. Your right arm goes entirely unaffected by it. An interesting note, though, is that while Iron Bear has to stack Drowning in Brass to mm. benefit from it, if you stack Drowning in Brass while in Iron Bear and you get out, Moe's instantly benefits from it. Interesting. Do you, you don't lose your stacks of Drowning in Brass when you hop into Iron Bear and hop out, do you? No. Okay. No. You can have three Drowning in Brass, you can hop into Iron Bear and immediately hop out, and if those three Drowning in Brass haven't expired, you benefit from them immediately. Um, and... Lastly, uh, desperate measures, or if you want to talk about desperate measures and tenacious defense, up to you. But um, I remember you mentioned desperate measures was because I got this comment a lot. Why don't you take desperate measures on your Iron Bear build? And you told me that it was because it only applied to Moses' health if she was in Iron Bear. Desperate Measures looks at Moses' health. So if Moses is at full health while in Iron Bear, you get no Desperate Measures bonus. If you're wearing a Deathless Artifact or you take another means to be at low health and you get into Iron Bear, you benefit from Desperate Measures bonus. However, say that you you generally have full health and you get damaged and you hop into Bear, mm. you benefit from Desperate Measures, but if Moses gets healing of some sort, that goes to Moses' health, fills Moses' health up, and you will stop benefiting from Desperate Measures. Gotcha. So... Even if you're low, if Moe's regenerates health, you can lose your benefit while you're in Iron Bear. You're in Iron Bear for like, what, like two minutes, you said? Yep, two minute duration is about if you're doing a bear build of some sort. Gotcha, gotcha. It can be longer than that, but call it two minutes, yes. Anytime in those two minutes, if you get healing, that will apply. And I know this is a little weird question, but some people ask me about melee Moe's and melee bear there's not much that you could do to increase the melee damage of iron bear correct like you don't you can't put on like a brawler's no. ward or anything like that and get melee no bonus. melee those uh the bear fist augments are all not counted as melee in fact it's worth noting just for iron bear in general the only um augments you can get on gear that affect iron bear mm -hmm. are health increases uh slash and splash damage modifications so if you've got splash damage radius or splash damage that affects bear mm. but if you get something like um a shock damage on your artifact that doesn't affect bear's weapons okay that's good to know i know there's something weird with tenacious defense in the shield start annoyant so it's i i i don't like um dropping health gate i think that health gate is a very important um tool of survival for Moe's and so I don't run builds without health gate mm. almost ever so when I do a um, shield of retribution build I tend to take um, tenacious defense as a last line of defense I'll do that with like a recharge a shield mm. and between the two of them it just loops and I can shield tank through that without having to give up health gate as a way to gain big shields all right you ready to move on to the green tree yeah, for sure. Perfect. Anything in the green tree that we should know about? Uh, let's first talk about what applies to um, Iron Bear and Auto Bear in the green tree. Mm. So, Iron Bear does get Cloud of Lead as a bonus to its mag size. Mm -hmm. Not all weapons benefit from it. So, like, the rail guns get zero benefit from Cloud of Lead. But, like, the rocket pods will benefit from free ammo with the Cloud of Lead. The counter starts for iron bear fresh when you get in so you always get the fourth shot after getting to iron bear that is always free mm -hmm. and for a weapon like the nukes instead of it giving you a free shot you just fire two nukes instead of one for one trigger pull yeah oh that's cool so if you've ever used nukes you might notice an inconsistent damage where you do okay damage and then suddenly you do a very good burst of damage probably a cloud of lead proc 
giving you double nukes. Double nukes. We like that. We like double nukes. Then, uh, Scorching RPMs and Specialist Bear both also mention Iron Bear damage. Mm -hmm. It's worth noting that they also both apply to Auto Bear. So, Auto Bear's damage is more limited. It doesn't get Desperate Measures, and it doesn't get Drowning in Brass, it doesn't get Phalanx Doctrine, which Iron Bear does get and benefit from. Mm -hmm. Auto Bear, however, does get Scorching RPMs, it does get Stainless Steel Bear, and it does get Specialist Bear, and it gets Ducker Bear. Each of these apply to Auto Bear. Auto Bear didn't used to get Scorching RPMs or Stainless Steel. This is a new change. If uh -huh. you tested a while ago, it didn't ha it didn't work. More recently, they had some patches. So for an Auto Bear build, you want Scorching RPMs, you want Stainless Steel Bear, and you want um, Specialist Bear for max damage for Auto Bear. Hmm. It's not worth going for Desperate Measures purely for Auto Bear's benefit. Because Auto Bear does not benefit from it. So do you think that's part of the reason besides the mayhem scaling that the iron bear like afk builds have been oh, like pretty strong it's partly that um the mayhem scaling has made iron bear strong also iron bear's damage is currently bugged when you're in iron bear both scorching rpms and stainless steel bear actually have their damage bonus counted twice so oh, you really? double benefit from them you get you get the multiplier twice so you, which affects um, Iron Bear very drastically. And then Auto Bear doesn't double benefit from Stainless Steel Bear and Scorching Up. Uh -huh. yes. However, it does double benefit from Ducker Bear. So you getting into Ducker Bear doesn't give you 50% more Iron Bear damage. It gives it twice, oh. but they're also, they're, the bonuses also multiply each other. So if you just had no Ducker Bear versus Ducker Bear, it's a 125% extra damage, which is part of what makes AFK builds currently so much stronger than even just standing next to Auto Bear. So if you are gonna do AFK modes, you definitely should be hopping in that turret. If you want to be AFK, yeah, you should definitely be hopping in the turret. If you want to fight the side, um, Iron Bear, that still works, and a well-tuned Moe's build can output more damage than Auto Bear with Ducker Bear. Mm. You're fighting beside um, Auto Bear, so that is a place that was rock up here is a stronger pace style than just pure AFK, but we all like the meme of Junk and Duck Bear and Let Bear do all the work for us. Your mic cut out a little bit there. Could you say that again? We we all like um the joy the first time we've jumped in Duck and just let Ducker handle a difficult Everything. content for yeah. us. Um... Ducker Bear is still glitched with Guardian takedown mechanics, and this is worth noting. So if you're in Ducker Bear, crystals um don't stop charging for Guardian jumps on the crystal while you're in Ducker Bear. And the theme is Rad Bubble. If you're in Ducker Bear, it cannot kill you. It will kill Auto which jump out and uh. you're still up. And it also can still skip Scourge. They remove some of the skips for Scourge's teleports. Mm. Ducker Bear is still not being fixed. You can, if you're in Ducker Bear, you still skip the teleport. Wow, that's awesome. Um, and you've talked to me about this skill before. What do you think of Russian Offensive? I think it's almost underrated. It's weird to say that about a lifesteal skill mm. in a Borderlands game. However, Russian Offensive 1, it applies as long as you're shooting. So if, if, you run in, if you're running and you sprint and you're shooting, it applies. It also applies to any dot damage you have. So if you throw a grenade with fi and fire in the skag den gives you a dot damage on that grenade, that will heal you through Russian Offensive. Uh, that's cool. And lastly, if you like sprinting and say you run into a barrier or some piece of terrain blocks you, you still continue to gain Russian Offensive bonus as long as you don't stop, um, take your hand off the keyboard or pull back. You will still continue to gain Russian Offensive bonus and keep that life still going. Mm. So as long as I'm, do I still, I need to be holding down the sprint button, but as long as I'm pressed into cover, I will be life just, stealing just, while shooting. Just pretend that you, you, were, you didn't have your momentum impeded, keep the button held down mm -hmm. you still get the life still this is this allows for some neat tricks in certain areas that's pretty cool the, like the wotan or kraken door yeah kraken door is a example i use a lot and it's become just my default way to kill kraken is just jump out of bear and run a kraken door <laughs> that must look pretty scary for kraken <laughs> kraken's perspective prismatic just running at you <laughs> Rush is still, a, still a sketchy skill to have as your only form of um, healing. 
is purely because cryo is a very common thing and especially my one takedown has a lot of cryo guns mm. and if you get cryoed you can't use rush so it's unreliable is the only means of healing mm. however as utility heal and uh i need to get out of here quickly give me health while i run away it's an excellent skill and for one point there's not really better value in the skill tree for it gotcha gotcha all right so click click and magazine size skills i want to know your take do you do you like click click do you usually spec into it i find click click to be a very weapon dependent mm -hmm. skill for weapons such as the flipper which is very ammo efficient and you don't run low on your magazine very often with it i find click click is a bad skill you very seldom will utilize click click with a gun like the flipper however guns like the sandhawk or the kerosin are far less ammo efficient and you run low quickly and it's easier to be low on ammo with them mm. i find click a much more useful skill there are also shenanigans with like a launcher where you can have zero ammo and you can just use means of destruction to restore ammo and keep a very low ammo count mm. while spamming a launcher and that also takes advantage of click click really nicely for a decently sized boost to your damage mm. You usually do want magazine size skills because click click is a um, percentage of your mag that's empty. Mm. So you're not punished for having a bigger mag. And in fact, you get slightly more bonus for being on the last bullet of your mag if you've got a bigger magazine mm. that you're empty to get there. Again, it kind of depends on your gun because you don't want to have so much mag that redistribution just fills up your entire mag while you're shooting and trying to take advantage. Mm. It's, it's a balancing act of with the gun, you want a mag size that allows you to get down to a low mag, and then with a bit of trigger restriction, you can keep your mag low to utilize click click really well. Makes sense, makes sense. Yeah, Moe's always kind of feels like a balancing act of like trying to just hit that like happy medium of either never reloading or reloading just enough. Yes, there's definitely a balancing act there. Fire rate is a question that often comes up is, do I want more fire rate to counteract the fact that I've got redistribution working? Mm -hmm. And my take is Blastmaster is the only time where you should fear reloading. Reloading isn't the end of the world. And in fact, Moe's actually has um, healing while she's reloading. So it's not the end of the world if you're reloading. Mm. It, it's, a, it's painful to reload and you want to avoid reloading. However, the odd reload, if you have a bit of extra fire rate, isn't the end of the world. So like... I run Rocketeer a lot with the flipper, mm -hmm. and it's a very ammo efficient gun. However, I still do actually run my mag dry eventually. But if I'm reloading once, maybe twice in a room in like Guardian Takedown, that's not the end of the world. And I'll take the better damage of having fire rate from like scorching RPMs or a roll on my class mod that increases my fire rate because reloading once or twice isn't the end of the world on Moe's. Mm -hmm. It's inconvenient and it takes a while, but it's not something to be feared yeah and now that we've kind of covered uh i think majority of the skill trees real quick what um what mayhem modifiers do you like running on most for the most part i know it varies I, build to build but i like speed demon or um slayer yes i like speed demon and slayer slayer just because it's a nice easy one that you can totally ignore if you want or you can take advantage of it as a finishing option and Speed mm. Demon, because Moe's doesn't have um, speed boost of herself. So if I can wear a Victory Rush and I can have Speed Demon, it fills in a mobility issue that Moe's has at base. Mm. So, so as, as an easy modifier, I like both of those. Um, there's, there's also cases where you do want grenade damage from the easy modifier, though I don't personally find that Moe's has a damage issue, so I've never gone for grenade damage, even in Minesweeper builds. Mm. But I know that that is a popular choice, and it's, it's not a bad modifier. I just prefer the mobility of Speed Demon personally mm. medium modifiers i don't think much on many of them Healy avenger is probably my favorite it's very easy to have it out of the way and most deals enough splash damage that just kind of destroys the hearts before they have any use to the enemies mm. so you just end up with free health pickups and i find it's a really nice one however medium is more a thing of avoiding pain tolerance and yeah there's another medium modifier i'm forgetting that's also worth avoiding I found so, I forget what the name of it, but there is a there's a cryo or one. Oh yeah, freeze the, tag. Freeze tag is one to avoid. Yeah, the the cloning mining tractors will 
seek those out and kill you very quickly because they'll be on top of you <laughs> then for hard modifiers i find it's drone range or tick door for my two preferred mm -hmm. chain gang is all right but causes performance issues for me and just as a general is more bothersome to deal with hmm. whereas drone range is one percent of an enemy's total hp per second it's really easy to just totally ignore that amount of healing yeah and if you're running splash guns I mean, short fuse's splash is big enough as a radius to kill Drone Ranger. Mm. And Drone Ranger's health is a joke that it's very easy to do so. And then ticked off, Mose doesn't rely on dot damage much. Barring a bit of healing from Russian Offensive, you otherwise don't notice the loss in dot damage. Mm -hmm. Very hard modifiers. Holy Crit is worth voiding just at all costs. Oh. The way Holy Crit's math works with short fuse is that even if you're hitting crits, you're actually losing damage. Interesting. Because Holy Crit halves your short fuse damage, and short fuse is a far bigger proportion of your DPS than your actual gun's damage. So that the uh, damage boost part of Holy Crit doesn't actually even counteract on critical hits. Mm -hmm. So it's just straight damage loss, and it's worth avoiding. Interesting. Not the, not the face. I like my crits. I avoid not the face. Uh -huh. I'm dazed and confused. I use a lot of elemental weapons. I think we've all learned elemental weapons do better damage generally. Mm. It's just a horrible modifier to use, and especially if you get infused with like an enemy infused with cry that rushes you, you then get cry from the nova that comes out of it. Worth avoiding. That leaves you with roguelite, um, post mortem, and buddy system. Post mortem I find very easy to deal with. Mo's can kill post mortem really quickly. Post mortem is also capped at two deaths on the field at once. So if you can just kite around two deaths. It's fine. Or if you kill an enemy in Iron Bear, you get out of Iron Bear. The death tends to get stuck in Iron Bear. And so then there's just a death sitting wherever Iron Bear was. And it's stuck there for its duration of like 40 seconds before um, Post Mortem kills itself. So Post Mortem, I find just it's my general go to at this point. Mm -hmm. Buddy system is nice, so it can be frustrating when an enemy gets stuck in something. If you're doing something yeah. like Plague Bearer spam, Generally, the splash radius alone just takes care of buddy system and you almost forget about it. And so it's also a nice hassle free modifier to run. Roguelite is generally just not advised. Mose does enough splash damage, she downs herself a ton. Mm. It's just, it's yeah, worth avoiding most of the time. Roguelite on Mose is not a fun time. <laughs> there, there are cases like if you're doing an Iron Bear build where you can kind of justify using it, and it's nice because. Post-mortem is horrible in an Iron Bear build. You get yeah. kicked out and you have to be up with a full cooldown. Generally, I just avoid um, roguelite. So it's by process of elimination, I end up with post-mortem or buddy system as my preferred very hard modifiers. Anything else that you want to touch up on before we head out? It's worth touching on bear survival. So like, you'll see there's a shield equipped there which gives health. And so that's just to help Iron Bear survival. However, even without that, you don't need... Um, health in your shield for Iron Bear to survive. The problem though is that the best thing at killing Iron Bear and Auto Bear is Iron Bear. Mm -hmm. So the most common way to, to have your Iron Bear die is you walk next to a barrel and a barrel will one shot Iron Bear. No matter the health, no matter the healing you've generated for yourself, you are going to be one shot by barrels. Mm -hmm. Molly One Takedown is an excellent um, place that this happens a ton. Also, mine super grenades. You can kill yourself with mine super grenades. You proc through um bear. This kills um bear a lot. And then there's certain weapons that um Mo's has that deals um self damage in Iron Bear. So the Vanquisher rocket pods are a very popular one that deals self damage, as are exploding bullets. Both you get a rusher in your face or automate a rusher will kill Iron Bear instantly. Okay. Safe slash weapons to use though that don't deal self damage in a great run oh. are the nukes and sabot rounds so sabot rounds in red and nukes in blue mm -hmm. i was um, have enough protocol sorry i was surprised that the uh nukes didn't do i mean it's good that they don't because otherwise you'd be dead every time you shoot them but uh yeah they're the only ones in that thing, I believe that um, don't do self damage Gotcha. So yeah, if you're in Demolition Woman and you don't have access to capacitive armature or savage rounds, mm. nukes the best bet you've got for auto bear. Anything else in auto bear will kill itself at the first thing that rushes it. Oh, okay. So go for nukes or capacitive armature. Yeah, capacitive armature. 
Iron Bear's got enough survival at this point that you can last full Slaughter Shaft Bounds or full Mario um, or Guardian Takedowns like a Rocketeer type thing, and Auto Bear will survive with no healing and just capacitive armature to kill things quickly. Mm. Though Mario One Takedown has a bit more damage than that, and so sometimes you'll want like Corrosive Savage Rounds just to complement the healing. Anything else? I think that covers it. Great. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, this was a lot of fun. I learned a decent amount of things that I didn't even know about Moe's, so I hope you guys learned something. If you guys did enjoy the video, be sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe. Um, Prismatic, if you've got any last words. Not like uh, Thank dying, you again but... for having me, and <laughs> goodbye, everyone. Bye, guys. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.